Hi everybody, uh, my name is Catherine Eccles, I'm a research fellow at the Oxford Internet Institute which is a department in social sciences here in the University of Oxford and I also look after digital humanities for the humanities division. I'm here to tell you about Cabinet which is a little project that we've been uh, running here for about 18 months now. Um, I'm the one here presenting to you today but it's a massive collaborative effort um, including all of these people, one of whom at least is sitting in the audience. Um, and the cabinet project really started with need. So did we need a new toy to play with? Well, here are some of the needs that were expressed by some of the members of the team. We wanted to give more sustained access to objects um, for teaching. So not just the things that were readily available for handling sessions, but the rare stuff, the fragile stuff, things that they wouldn't, students wouldn't normally get their hands on. We wanted huge numbers of objects. We wanted to dazzle and amaze the students with the number of objects, both 2D and 3D, that we could bring before their eyes. We wanted to be able, them to be able to examine and, and revise objects. So if you're studying here in Oxford, you might see objects in your first term in the autumn and you might take your exam seven months later. How do you revise an object that you saw many months ago? And how can we use the, the brilliant affordances of digital to understand more about the learning potential of, of a platform like Cabinet? How do we understand how people learn? What do we understand about pathways through the resource from the digital trails left behind? So we built this little tool thanks to some funding from the University's Innovation Challenges Fund. Um, it's um, completely mobile optimised, it's uh, full of 2D and 3D images. We also used photogrammetry using Agisoft PhotoScan to create our 3D models. Um, but there's a huge wealth of material in here including existing digital assets from our own collections right across the university museums and beyond. Um, but also Creative Commons openly licensed content from across different collections. This is the front page. This is what you'll see if you Google us and find us. But this is what students see. It works on a single sign-on basis. So our students access it through our VLE, which is WebLearn at the moment. And they will see the courses that they're signed up to. They're signed up in groups. They enter the course. They see the drawers of the different objects week by week. You can set it up as anything, as a walking tour, as a handling session, as a tutorial, as a lecture, as a class. And then once you delve inside each of those drawers, you find a set of objects like this. This is our flagship course. Um, this is the, uh, the pilot course that we worked on, the 17th uh, century scientific revolution. And it's full of gorgeous materials. So once you delve in a little bit more, you find an array of different objects from manuscripts to maps to portraits, to 2D and 3D images, and aspects of the built environment. This is one of our 3D models. I didn't want to risk a sort of live demo, but you can see from this one here that it's beautifully mobile optimized. You can screw, uh, zoom right in, zoom right out. And we also have, thanks to our brilliant um, web and mobile um, applications team, we have some bespoke features. You can put pins in these 3D objects so that you can point students to points of interest. You can tell them about particular things they, want, they need to look out for. You can turn those pins around and you can link them to discussions and other features. Here's, an, here's a map of the original Bodleian, all marked up by the tutor to show the things that are important. Each of those pins links out to other, um, other bits of content. You can see there are related sources here for the students to delve into, external links that they can follow if they want to. And that reminds me of our brilliant talk this morning from Cambridge about the need for sort of bounded content, things that students can feel comfortable exploring and knowing the limits of, of as well as the potential uh, links further on. Um, we have just put in some lovely new features. You can embed video and audio so you can talk students through a particular object or map or manuscript. You can uh, show them a video to explain it more. We've put a scale in so that you can see what sort of size you're thinking about because whilst we have very tiny things, we also have a seven foot tall sundial that's fully manipulable in there. 
Um, this is the technique you've already heard about. Um, this is how it works. I'm happy to talk about it if anyone's interested. Um, but most importantly, what was the student feedback like? Well, we couldn't have paid them to say better things about cabinet. Um, they used it in all the ways that we'd hoped, as preparation for class, during class, and especially there's a huge peak in our analytics after class. So students were using it to go back to once they had a class and to think about some of the themes. Um, they asked for revision classes that included museum visits. They want to go and see the real things in the real spaces, and that's absolutely what we hoped for. They, they liked the logical arrangement, the clarity, and again, the boundedness of cabinet, the fact that they knew these were the objects they needed to look at for those courses. And they said wonderful things like it helped them to be more original, it helped them avoid those anachronisms that are so common when you're teaching from a purely text-based curriculum. So, uh, we have lots of courses that we're waiting to upload. Um, we are working with all of the museums and lots of hidden collections around the university now. Uh, we're doing everything from history to anthropology to even dermatology and clinical medicine now. Bits of people are appearing in cabinet. Um, it's all tremendously exciting and I think that's probably my time pretty well up. So you, you have a minute left if you'd like. Oh, well, then perhaps I could take a question or two because that, that's, that's it. Please get in touch if you're interested. Thank you.